everyone and welcome back to my channel so I asked on my community tab on YouTube I was trying to think then on YouTube and then on Instagram if anyone wanted to join in with this um, page so I was doing it as a full big group body colour now I'm pretty sure I've not done one of these before I might have done a hashtag or two but I've not done a full group body colour and I'm so surprised how many people have messaged me and commented on both the YouTube and the Instagram. So I'm really, really, really excited about doing this one. And I thought I'd film parts of it. Well, I'm hoping to film most of it on camera. And if I don't, I'll apologise in advance. But that's my plan. So, I want to get out. I'm out of breath. I'll just have to run up and down the stairs. I'm so unfit. Anyway. I've planned on doing the background first to just get that out of the way and it's a really sunny day today so I'll be able to pop it outside and it'll be dry in minutes. So my idea is distressing in the background but I'm not going to do the splatter effect on the inside I don't think. <laughs> I've just got an A4 piece of paper and I've well I've attempted to pre-cut it. Look at my lines, look at my lines. So we'll pick a colour out first and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with this. So I want a bluey, greeny, turquoise colour for the background. So I keep my Distress uh, inks in these containers and upside down. I believe that's the best way to store these upside down. So I'm going to have to lift it up in the air to see the colours. I wish I could show you this, but I can't. So we'll go with Broken China. Let's pull that one out. Uh, salty Ocean. For a darker colour, we go with faded jeans. So that's that one. And then what colours have we got in here? We've got, that's perfect, peacock feathers. And I think, is it evergreen? Is it evergreen? Evergreen bur burra? English debba? Uh, pine needles. Pine needles. I know that seems a lot. I might not use all of them colours. We shall see. So, we want our blenders, which I'm hoping that most of these are clean because I did clean them all last week along with my makeup brushes. So, let me just double check that one should be okay. And then we want some scrap pieces of paper behind this one as well to protect the page behind. And my idea was is to cover with this one like this and then do all the background and then in the middle do it an ever so slightly lighter shade so that's what we're going to do I need to protect this side which I didn't think of I didn't think of at all so how many pieces of paper have I got here I've got enough because I'm not going to use tape in this week because I know that the, it's going to rip the paper so instead I'll just hold this here while I'm doing the edges to protect the next page. I hope that made sense. I hope that made sense. So we're better off doing this side first because it's going to be the most annoying because of the spine I think. So, peacock feathers I think. Or should we just go with the broken china? No, we'll go with the peac peacock feathers first. So the way that I do it, just firmly push the blender down onto the ink pad, just like that. So I'll get this as close as I can to the spine. I'm going to need another hand here by the looks of it and get blending. If you can hear bangs or squeals, my daughter's not gone back to school yet. Well, she's not started school yet. She's finished nursery and she used to start school, but she's starting a week later than all the other children um, <clears throat> yeah so she's upstairs watching TV in a room for an hour and giving mummy a break a well needed break actually um, right so I've not used ink tents in this so it's going to be new to me how it's going to behave I'm not liking these so I'm hoping that I can go over them them splodges there with the darker colour. So bring this colour further down. I do. I need another hand. I need another hand. My son's still here. He only starts on Wednesday. Maybe I should shake him down. I hope the camera's not shaking too much there because I, I am using quite a heavy hand. 
And this is where I get ink all under my nails. So I'm gonna have to bring you out just a little bit just so I can get to the bottom bit and you can see what I'm doing. I should have made this a perfect circle because now that's gonna look not so good with them lines. I'm really testing myself here. <laughs> I'm testing my patience. I might I might have to just use tape. I really don't want to though. I'm I think this paper will rip. I'm not too fussed if a little bit goes on, I just don't want a lot. And my camera is shaking. And let's try this bottom bit. Yeah, I'm gonna put tape down because I think that is just gonna annoy the life out of me. So we'll have to use a heat gun to remove this tape. I'll try a different tape in this one. So it's just masking tape. I'll pop it on my leggings to try and take some of the stickiness off. But with that probably comes Chihuahua hair on my page. Right, that should be a little, little bit easier. I'll just have to concentrate now. I'm just holding this one piece of paper. Loads easier, but it's still doing the same thing, which I'm not enjoying at all. Right, I'm gonna have to move my camera because it keeps moving. Right, let's try again, shall we? So I'll move this right now. Where is it the best curve? Probably the I'm glad that I put that tape down now because I'm, I'm planning on going over this with a couple of layers so I didn't fancy having to do that every time. Why I thought that was a good idea, I don't know. See, it's not doing it as much on this side. I don't think I'm doing anything different. Right. I like that effect though and I think that's the perfect colour as well. I don't, shall I pull that colour in? I'll go for the lighter one. See this is how my brain processes doing this sort of thing. I, do, I try my best not to plan pictures and I just go with the flow sort of thing. And I'm sitting here and going, well, that'll look nice there and that'll look nice there. Because I think if I planned it and it didn't turn out how the plan was meant to go, I'd be annoyed with myself. Whereas if I do it like this, then I'm surprised. I'm happily surprised. So let's switch to pine needles where this is more green. So let's be careful how much I'm putting down of this. I think I had a little bit of black on the the blender the blender brush, but I'm not mad at it actually. I'm not mad at it. Let's bring the colour here as well. Um, and at the top there, because I'm not liking how light that is. You could always make your own stencils as well. Them plastic sheets that I uh, always talk about that you use in the back of the back of the pages, they'd be ideal actually. 
And I know there's such a thing called, is it a cricket? That cuts out and it connects it to your computer. I don't fully understand how, how it works. I've just seen uh, different people that use it to make like badges and stickers and whatnot. But yeah, especially with distressing, this is a, a, a cracking way to do it. I'll try my best not to have my arm in a way. A little bit more on there. It's so warm today and I don't want to have the patio doors open because then you might hear dogs. And I don't want to put the fan on because it's really, really loud. And apparently we've got a heat wave coming, which I'm dreading. It's only meant to be a mini heat wave though, lasting two or three days, I believe. So it shouldn't be too bad. So I want more of a blue, so let's try the salty, salty ocean. Did I call it salted ocean before? So how much is this going to actually show up? Whoops, I say that and look how much I've to put down. Jinx myself. I wish I'd done that cut a little bit more smoother. So let's try this side. I was literally just thinking then, I'm enjoying not having nails on because I'm letting my nails relax and just put like a hairdener on them and then I go ahead and put ink all over them instead. This bottom bit here needs a little bit more colour. And I think I'll try just a little bit of the broken china. And I'm liking a leak of faded jeans as well in the very the very tip of the corners. So which one was this one again? This one was broken china. I think I'm going to end up using them more towards the centre. I'm not worried about it too much going on the illustrations because you can colour over these. It's it's easy to colour over the, over them as long as it's not really really dark anyway. So the faded jeans just in the corners. Right, so I don't want to leave this tape on for long, so please don't rip, please don't rip. Very good, very good. So, for the centre, I want to use the opposite piece of paper. Or do I? Do I, just want, to, do I want to pull it in a little bit? I'm going to put the lighter blue on the inside, but I'm not going to put it everywhere. I'm going to leave a little bit of white showing. Yep, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So, try and clean this brush off as best as I can, just with the, an old tea towel. I actually once used a brand new tea towel. I wasn't even thinking. So, yeah, I've got about two or three of these now, and technically I've, I should only have one. I like the lighter colour ones. I've had a, a black one before and you can't really see the ink coming off. Anyway, I'm talking about tea towels. So with the salty ocean again, let's load up the brush. And I'm, I don't want to be as heavy handed now. I'm putting pressure down, but nowhere near as, as uh, before. I'm 
and you'll see the sort of effect that I'm, I'm going for. Leave the centre clear. I have got these little ones as well, but I don't care for them. You know, if I get in, in between, I really don't care for them. So I rarely use them now. I think I saw a colour in chat with Sammy using them, and she uses them beautifully. I just, I just can't. I just can't. They come out blotchy. I'm, I'm just too heavy handed, I think. So we'll switch over now to the broken china. That one's a lot lighter, even though it looks so similar on the sticker. I wonder if we can get away with putting that faded jeans or just stick with the greens evergreen burra I think that is I can't say that word or the peacock feathers I think peacock feathers it's like thinking out loud this If I wanted to add, add the water droplets to this, I'm going to end up sacrificing the page behind, which is that one, is it the anchor, not the anchor, the wheel. I think I'm going to do it, I really love that effect and I think definitely with it being an underwater scene, I think it'd be silly of me not to, not to add just a tiny bit of water. I say that, I'm going to say that and it's not going to be a tiny bit of water, I'm going to be splashing half of the sea on it, I bet you. So this one is the, is it the faded jeans, yeah, but again I'm not using a really heavy hand. And I'm going in circular motion so I don't want it to be blotchy like these corners were. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. And I am I'm gonna have to because it'll irritate me if I don't. So my normal squidgy bottle that I use is it's just a hairdressing uh, bottle and I got it for a pound and I love it. So let's move these out of the way. I am going to sacrifice the page behind, it's one of the things I want to do this effect and it's just tough. So, the camera, if I put my hand here, my camera is the, so, I know that's not going to give you a massive idea of how far the camera is away, but I'd say it's a good foot and a half, I want to say, foot and a half, I can bring you in quite close, uh, so I'm going to hold it a little bit below my camera and instead of I'm not going to press it down all the way I'll just show you like this ever so slightly just tap it and it's just little droplets that are coming out you don't want to because you will destroy your beak so try and get it as flat as I can just tap in I've seen this technique done a couple of ways but this is the one that I like the best for me and one for good luck and I'm not going to leave it I'm going to pull the colour up straight away and I'm not smushing I'm just placing the tea towel down quite firmly and lifting it up changing the position of the tea towel because you don't want the wet ink transferring back onto your paper Clean area again. Smooth the paper and see if I've missed any bits. You can see that it's already starting to bleed through on the other side. <laughs> so it's really, really annoying. So I'm just going to leave this in the sun for five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. And it should be it should be dry. So I will be right back. 
So now that's dry, you will hear noises and stuff outside because I've left the patio doors open. It's too warm. The only good thing, it dries your page in minutes. So I pulled out my Karen uh, brush markers. Yes, I'm ashamed that I stole them like this, but I can't think of anything else. I don't want to have to buy another pencil case. Um, so yeah, they're all better. They're all in here. But I thought I'd use these today. I've not used these in the longest time. So, well, I've already destroyed the page behind it. I thought I might as well. I might as well. So actually, I'm going to put them there and bring you in. And I just want to work on today. I don't want this video being mega, mega long. You can look forward to the mega, mega long videos in a week's time. I just want to do this seaweed bits and bobs, I think. So, I'm liking the look of this. I'm just going to pull random colours out. This one's called Curry. I've never seen a, a, a curry like unless it's a Thai curry. Uh, anyway, I've got a couple of blenders in here as well. What other? We've got an ocean teal one, which will be perfect, I think. What else have we got? Let's pull it back over. This one might be a little bit, yeah, it's neon green. I don't want that. Uh, grass. I'll pull that out, but I might possibly not use it. How about that one? Lush green. I think that that'll be enough for now. And she carries on leaking through. But my idea with these is, I have used these dry on pages, and I've coloured over the top of them with pencil, and they work really, really nicely. And I've used, um, you know, the Karen Dash. Oh, what's it called? That. Let me just show you. If I, if I, here it is. This. This palette. I couldn't think of the name of it. I've used that and then used these as watercolours. They work really, really well for that as well. But I think I'm going to test this in the back of the book. Is it best be in the back? No, I can't do that. What about at the front? I might possibly want to colour that one. Um, just bear with me. I'll do it on this page here. Just one of these leaves that I'll be able to cover up. Just want to test it out first and see how it behaves on this paper. Because as long as I'm quick, it shouldn't streak. And it's that that has bled through, so I wouldn't use this on a page that I wanted to save, but we're alright because we're not doing that with this one. So, where's my plastic sheets? I'm all in a, in a fuddle today. I'm not organised at all. So here's one of my used ones. I just reuse these over and over and over again until I physically can't. So let's put that behind there. And let's start off with this one here. So this one was the curry colour. I hope that the lighting's okay for you. I don't want to have to put a lamp on. So where are your little seaweed? It's this one isn't it that I wanted to do. So I'm I'm gonna be a little bit quicker here because these do streak if you're not quick but pencils work beautifully over the top of these and they're really really juicy pens you actually see through so you can see how much ink you've actually got left I do believe that you can get these in metallics I really like that colour actually I'm wondering if I can pull it I can do the bigger one on this side in the same colour and then just add a little bit of pencil for detailing over the top but I love how the splatter effect turned out that I've, I've seen that done a few different ways but that's my favourite So you can mix your own colours with these if you use the palette. It doesn't have to be the Karen Dash one. Just any non-porous surface. I've got... Is it porcelain? China. That China were a plate that I use as well for watercolour. So you just colour on the plate and then mix the colours that way. I really like that colour. I think it suits the rest of it. So I'll move over 
move my drink and my phone and everything and we'll move over to this side I'm not seeing any others that I could do this colouring just these two but I have got the um, a new palette and some new watercolour paints I think that might have been my last video I'll leave it uh, somewhere I'll pop it up here if I can remember I'm planning on using them as well in this and some stickles and just go out all out on this one with it being the the group body colour Very pretty shade this one. I have to concentrate because I really don't want to quit the lines with these. is grayling. Oh Evie. I think with detailed pages like these, if you do things in sections like I'm just gonna work on just the plants and then I just work on the fish and then maybe work on the background and the turtle or whichever order you want to do it, I think it makes it a lot easier than just looking at it as one full picture and thinking gosh I've got all that to do and it's easier for me anyway and very nice so I don't think there's any others that I can do in this colour which is a shame I mean I could do I'll keep that out and we'll try the ocean teal and now we've got a helicopter and that is super duper close uh, we'll do these weird shaped ones are they meant to be coral? actually yeah they might be coral so I know that some corals are pink so we've got a nice skin pink here and this is skin number one and number two we'll go with the lighter one and we'll do this pink oh so that is really really light That's okay. I'm noticing here if I'm going over the same area a couple of times it is starting to pill a little bit well I'm not too worried because I'm only doing pencils over the, over the top of this and it'll be fully dry anyway so that's a little coral load done and then we've got a piece on this side as well shall we do that one a darker pink? Mm. we've got the pink too, or a really really pink pink which is pale. That says pale, but that looks darker to me than that. Let's use that pale pink and see what that looks like. Just to make it a little bit different. Ah, I like that one. It's definitely not pale pink. Don't you dare slam door. And it is going to do and it's going to show and it's going to change my lighting. 
Rollo go and open the door again. <laughs> I've had to put a blanket at my uh, feet at this desk because for the last week, I want to say, she started just sitting at my feet under under the desk in the evenings when I'm sat here doing doing art. And I didn't want her sitting on a cold room floor, so I've put a little blanket in for her. And then what do you know? I look down there and I've got two of them. I think I shared a picture actually on Instagram the other night. They were being really cute. I have to open that door back up. Evie, just jump up and get the handle and push it, love. I'm sure you can manage that. And these bits down here. So that's them corals done. I'm just double checking because I have a tendency of putting things away and missing missing pieces. So I'll be right back because I need to open that door. Right, we're back in business. I've just got the scrap pieces of paper that I did to do the background. Just to test some of these greens. So that is the teal green, is it? Ocean teal green. I've got a funny feeling this one here is going to be too dark, lush green. Um, might be alright. This one's a really, really bright one. Now, I don't really know which one I want to go for. I'm thinking the teal one. So, if I did this one, I could do that one matching because they're very similar. And then the rest are corals, so I think that's what I'll do. make sure that my piece of paper my plastic piece of paper my piece of plastic sheet is behind correctly and start with these ones Yeah, they're not too bad. And because I'm really impatient, I'm going to use some of them paints now. I just want to. Why not? And this one is part of that plant there, so be careful. And I don't know whether that was part of the plant or the leaves, I don't know. I think with the paints I'll have to use them on, you know, like these bits here. Not like the fish because it'll take away some of the detail. But I'm glad that I've got the, the background done now. I'm always pleased to get the background done first, it's sort of out of the way and it takes away the scurry or white of the paper it takes most of it away anyway Oh and I went out the line then So it's coming down here isn't it, that's part of it there. Right, so I think I've done with these for now. So I'll get my paints out, which I keep my paints right next to me in a little acrylic container. So I've got the one from is it Archie's Paints or Archie's Colours? The grab bag to put this away. Nice. Very nice. Eh? And then I've got the Renaissance ones, so let's check out both of them. 
Let's see what sort of colour. I messed one of the swatches up there. Did I close it too early? Mmm, annoying. That needs to be moved. So, I think the emerald is going to be perfect. So, we'll definitely use that. And then we could use the colouring one when we've finished some of the details and just go over with a thin layer of these. See how beautiful they are. Absolutely gorgeous paints. But we'll use the emerald one for now. So I want a really fine brush. I want my water. And then my water bottle. That should be enough. Two big drops. And where do we want to place this? Like if I were, if I was to put it on this jellyfish here, it would hide all of them them lines. So that's why I'm thinking it's probably better. You like know, like these details here. Like that's part of that coral, I think. So we could do these three, maybe. Well, there's four. Or oh, that was too much shiny paint. Let's just see. So we need a cloth as well. This is what unorganised looks like. We're getting there. So wetting my brush. What I'll probably do is just bring you out. That should be enough and then I'm not having to worry. They're all in frame. But I just move it's annoying it's right on the edge and the way that the sun is coming in. Look how beautiful that is. The camera's not gonna play, is it? You can just see the water. But I promise you these are really, really lovely paints. Just mixing that, making sure it's activated. Let me just do a tester. So I need to leave it for another minute or two. You see how it's still quite translucent. You can see through it. You can still see though how shiny it is. These pans that I got, I think they were quarter pans. Or were they half? They might be half. The more expensive set were the £72, I think. And they were the full pans, I want to say. They might even be the half, I can't remember. I can't remember. I'll just put these on here. But you see what I mean? If I went over, like I said, that fish. You wouldn't be able to see. Let's check his above. You wouldn't be able to see the lines. I'm doing it every other one and then giving it a little bit of time to dry so they don't bleed. and then come back to it I think that would be the best way of me doing it and then on this one I will just put my little light on just for this part because I want you to really see how sparkly these are. So we'll leave it there, that should be okay. There she goes again with a bang in. Sounds like an earthquake. So they should be dry enough now for me to go back and add in between. That everything sounds close. You see how it started to bleed into that one? It's not too bad because they're the same colour, but if you were using different colours, I'd just make sure that it's completely dry. See the
see how sparkly that is. Well, you can't because the camera's thinking it's funny not listening. I promise you that, yeah. I use metallic watercolours or glittery watercolours in a long, long time. So this is really nice. So we'll start on this one. You see now that it's been left to activate, I'm not having to put loads and loads of layers down. Should be alright putting that there, it shouldn't touch. Rollo, don't you dare. As soon as you hear somebody walking past, we live on the, the end of um, like a little cul-de-sac. So we've got like the, the fence for people walking past. And as soon as you hear somebody, she's running out there, sniffing at the fence. And it annoys the life out of me. So I do try and catch her before she, she goes out there. But she's beat me to her. So I'm not going to push my luck with how long I'm filming today. I've been very lucky with the neighbour's dog so once I've done this little bit we'll do this as part one I'm hoping. I'm hoping. If I do any bits to it that are a bit like I think that it might be a little bit boring for you to watch I'll do some of it off screen that might be an idea. You know, like little bits of shade in here and there. I think that'll be the best way of me finishing this page off. And there we go. Clean my brush it off. And I, I won't leave this outside to dry because I don't want the pages flapping and then the paint going on the opposite side. But this is where we are so far. Let's move everything out of the way. I will use more watercolour paints as well on this page. I really do want this to be a mixed media page. And so far so good so we've done the ink tent background let me just move my light that'd help we've done the intense background with a splatter effect we've done the Karen markers for some of the seaweed and plants and then the renaissance watercolors for like, the shiny bits that you can see but I think it's coming on beautifully I will do a little tiny bit off camera but I will try my best to do most of it on camera just so you can see the process so thank you to everybody as well that asked and said that they were going to join in i can't wait to see everyone's finished pages of this so until part two i will see you in the next one bye